Hello everyone, back to you in today's video, we're going to have a look at when month head with Japanese and CFSB tomorrow. It's JMA Friday, as always on a Friday we're doing the month, the month head uh, look ahead. So we'll begin with the Japanese uh, model with JMA and then we'll have a look at CFSB2. We'll compare them and see what they're showing. This is going to take us into the second half of October. So we're going to go well into the middle of the autumn uh, with this update. Of course, today is the vernal equinox. So the sun is on the equator uh, today. Days and nights are of equal length. Uh, from tomorrow, nights will be longer than days. The sun will be in the southern hemisphere. It will leave our hemisphere and the descent into winter will begin good and proper uh, from tomorrow onwards. So, uh, and I say this update is going to take us into the second half of October, by which time we will be well into the autumn of 2017. So we'll begin with the JMA. Uh, these are 500 mm heights broken down into weekly pairs from the North Pole view down. So we've got the North Pole uh, just here, the mid latitudes of the Northern Hemisphere uh, around here. And perhaps most importantly, the British Isles is just there. So 500 mm is an area in the atmosphere, high pressure and low pressure are being moved around by the jet stream. And on these charts, blue will be extrapolating to below average heights, which is low pressure. And uh, sort of yellow, orange, red, uh, brighter colours extrapolated to above average heights, which is high pressure. I say these break down to week pairs. So the first week pair will take us from today, the 22nd through to the 29th of September. We find we've got a deep area of below average heights to our west, with a big area of above average heights to our east in the weekend. So it's going to be a real battle type situation, the low pressure in the Atlantic, trying to get the ascendancy. But actually, for the week ahead, I think it's really the ridge to the east and the northeast that's dominating this, bringing in the flow from an east to uh, southeast, or possibly even southerly direction. So it should be relatively mild, quite warm actually, in the week ahead, and with a reasonable amount of dry weather, albeit, bear in mind, this trough is a deep trough, and all the time it will be putting pressure on that ridge, trying to uh, break it down. We go through to week two, which is the 29th of September to 6th of October, and now we see that the ridge is being broken down. It's being pushed off to the north uh, and the northeast. So it is still there, but it's to our north and northeast now, and it's the below average heights in the Atlantic that are driving in uh, Atlantic-driven weather. So that's much more unsettled, probably quite a bit cooler as well. The main thing is that rain is coming back in from off the Atlantic at this ridge up here is being forced back by the Atlantic. So the JMA has um, the Atlantic winning the battle by the time we get through to the very end of September and into the early part of October. And then we go through to weeks three and four, which is taking us from the 6th through to the 20th of October. And uh, this is a two-weekly anomaly, of course, so these are always a little bit harder to decipher. We can see that we have got an area of above average heights here in the Atlantic. Also, some above average heights over Scandinavia as well. It's a bit of a trough there. And well, it's not a great deal going on. It's a bit of a ridge down here, perhaps. Uh, and maybe signs of a little bit of a norm blocking going on up here with some above average heights as well. So it looks rather messy. I would think overall we're probably still bringing in an Atlantic driven flow. But I wouldn't totally rule out the chance of something a little bit colder happening here with this trough uh, to the northeast. Uh, that's like a trough coming into Scandinavia. And if we do have some high pressure around here, let's say we have a reach there and we have below average heights there, then it's not inconceivable that we don't, that we might not, or we may turn the wind into uh, the north. So that's something a little bit kind of being hinted at there, but no more than that. It's a two-weekly anomaly, so it might be transition. It could be that week three is sort of Atlantic-driven and fairly mild, and then week four perhaps does something a bit colder. It might be the other way around. There's really not enough there to go on. But I think overall, probably staying quite changeable into the middle part of um, in middle, into middle part of October anyway. 
Let's have a look at the tropical amid latitude view. British Isles is just here in the top right hand corner of the chart as you're looking at it. So a reminder of that week one anomaly with the JMA, 500 millimeter height. And you have the ridge up to the, or out to the east, up to the northeast as well. We have the below average heights in the Atlantic, deep trough there. So it's a proper battle. Uh, low pressure is trying to drive in off the Atlantic. The ridge. Uh, out to the east, that's trying to keep warm uh, and mainly dry southerly, southeasterly winds going. You expect this to be quite a mild week, that's certainly what the model is seeing above average temperatures in the week ahead, quite substantially so, uh, actually. So we're going to be going through a warmer interlude compared to what we've had through uh, September so far, if the model is correct, of course. Uh, have a look at the precipitation anomaly for the week ahead. So it is still a bit wet and average in the north and west, even then. It does go a bit dry and average in the southeast. So perhaps a little bit more unsettled than you might have thought given the 500 millibar height anomaly. But remember, it is a very much a battle-type situation that's going on there. Go through to week two, which is the 29th of September to 6th of October. Below average heights out to the west, now dominating the weather as the ridge. We can't really see it, but it's over here. It's been forced out towards the northeast. This one, temperatures look a little bit cooler here. So uh, for Scotland, it is still a little bit warmer than average. But for England and Wales, it's close to average Possibly even hinting at being a little bit cooler than average. So definitely a cool down takes place there through the opening days of October. And also very unsettled with all places coming out with above average rainfall uh, through those opening days of October. And then we go through to week three and four, which is the 6th through to 20th of October. And these ones always much harder to decide. We know we've got some low pressure out there. Otherwise, there's not really much else to go on. The temperature anomaly for that two weekly period from the 6th to the 20th of October is basically close to average. It hints at perhaps still being a little bit cooler than average to the far southwest of the country, maybe a little bit milder than average uh, to the northeast. But overall, I think... Not a big deviation, close to average with the temperatures in that week three and four period. Bear in mind, it is two weekly, so it might be that you've got a warmer week and a cooler week offsetting one another. That is something you always have to keep in mind when you're talking about an anomaly of uh, two weeks or more. Uh, in terms of the precipitation anomaly, that's still coming out unsettled. So despite the mixed uh, or the uh, weak signal from the height anomaly, it is still looking like an unsettled couple of weeks overall. So um, it looks like October shaving up to be fairly standard sort of October, up to the middle part of the month anyway, with the JMA. Relatively cool and quite unsettled, I think, is the signal here overall for October with JMA. That takes you up to the middle of October. Of course, the second half of the month, um, that is much more uncertain. CFSV2 next, then, and see how that is uh, comparing. So, again, these are 500 millibar heights broken down into weekly periods. The first weekly period would take us from the 22nd through 28th of September. We have a large area of above average heights to our east and northeast. Below average heights there in the Atlantic. So, again, good agreement between the two models, really, for a big battle to be going on here. We've got uh, the low pressure trying to bring... Atlantic driven weather in and wet weather in both the Atlantic, the ridge out to the northeast that's trying to bring in uh, easterly or southeasterly or southerly winds and uh, keep it mostly dry or turn it mostly dry. Battleground UK for uh, week one. Go through to week two and in agreement with the JMA in that the Atlantic wins that battle. So we've got below average heights now to the west and over UK. The above average heights still there, but being squeezed back, forced back into uh, the north of Scandinavia and into western Russia as well. We're bringing in the flow and the jet stream like that. So much more unsettled there from the 29th of September to the 5th of October. Uh, then we get through to week three, which is the 6th through to the 12th of October. This one also looking very unsettled. Low pressure is dominating here. So quite an unsettled, quite a wet start to uh, October if uh, these models are right, I think. And then we go through to um, week four, which is the 13th to the 19th of September. Still below average heights out to our northwest, but weakening. Heights are rising 
uh, to the south across southern Europe. We've also got signs of a little bit of ridging heading in towards the north of Scandinavia. Not sure what uh, is going on there, but that high pressure from Scandinavia, Western Russia, that looks like it might be uh, starting to retrogress perhaps a little bit. But um, anyway, ignore that. I don't think that really matters for that uh, particular period from the 13th to the 19th. Might become a little bit more important later on towards the end of October. But for that period, it's not important. Um, for the 13th to the 19th of October, what's happening is heights rising to the south. So we're probably bringing up drier and perhaps warmer air, actually, from uh, southern parts of uh, Europe. So that could be um, that could be St. Martin's summer, actually, around the 19th of October. We tend to get uh, a warmer interlude sometime around the 7th to the 21st of October, often falling on the 19th. That is called St. Martin's summer. It tends to be kind of like the final burst of warmish conditions. You might be seeing some signs of that on uh, that particular uh, anomaly from CFS V2. So let's have a look at the temperature and precipitation anomalies then. So uh, this is the temperature anomaly for the coming week, which is the 22nd, 28th of September. Um, actually, this one isn't as warm as what the uh, JMA is doing. It is still a little bit warmer than average for Scotland, but elsewhere, just close to average with the temperatures, uh, really. So not seeing such a warm uh, week coming up as uh, the JMA. We go through to week two, which is the 29th of September, the 5th of October, and uh, this one looks average to a little bit cooler than average, especially so in the south. Notice, by the way, some very, very cold um, temperature anomalies here across many parts of uh, central and eastern Russia and uh, Siberia. That could get us off to a really early start with the snow cover season across uh, parts of Russia again uh, this year. So uh, quite striking the cold anomalies there being forecast by the time we get through to the start of October across uh, many parts of Russia. Always, we always keep an eye on how quickly snow cover is advancing across uh, Siberia through the autumn because it's one of the things that can play into uh, what we look at for our winter forecast. Um, also very cold across many parts of America as well. So uh, pretty chilly week really globally in the Northern Hemisphere. That one, 29th of September to the 5th of October. I'm off on a bit of a tangent with that. Should be concentrated on the UK. So um, for week three, which is the 6th through to the 12th of October, Again, we're coming out average to a little bit cooler than average in that week as well. And then we go through to uh, week four. And by the way, now we've got a huge flip occurring across many parts of uh, Russia. We're going significantly warmer than average with the temperature anomalies. So uh, quite unusual what's happening there. And for the UK also, it is going quite warm in that week, the 13th to the 19th of October. I say that's uh, classified as uh, St. Martin's summer around the 19th of October, when last burst of summer-like conditions. So that might be um, signs of that showing up with CFS V2. Finally, just looking at precipitation. So the week ahead is coming out a little bit wetter than average, especially so for the north and west, near and normal for England and Wales. Then week two, which is the 29th of uh, September to the 5th of October, that one comes out really significantly wetter than average for uh, all parts of the UK. Uh, and then we go through to week three. Um, we have slightly weaker signals here, but still, I think, on the wetter than average side for many parts of the country. So the first half of October does look unsettled here. I think that's a strong signal from both of these models that uh, once we get this slightly drier, slightly warmer interlude out of the way for the next few days, it looks like we do go into quite a pronounced period of unsettled and relatively cool weather for the first, uh, at least the first 10 days of October, if not the first two weeks. And then we go through to that warmer week, uh, the 13th to the 19th of October. And still, I think overall, looking a little bit wet and average, especially so for the north and west, although the signals are weakening uh, by that point. So what we can say, I think, with uh, pretty uh, strong um, agreement between these two models is that we've got a slightly drier and milder interlude coming up over the next few days. But we'll probably end September on an unsettled note. And then that takes us through at least the first week to 10 days 
of October, possibly the first couple of weeks of October, looking very unsettled, um, to some really quite big rainfall totals there uh, with proper Atlantic driven unsettled autumnal uh, weathering to the first bit of October. Round middle of the month, we might get something a little bit drier and warmer coming along. That's a very long way off. It's week four. Um, it is sort of classic to get a final warmer burst sometime around, I'd say, the 17th to 21st. Um, but uh, it's a really long way off that, and I wouldn't want to be uh, too uh, sure about that, particularly until we see the JMA firming up on that. The signal from the JMA did look quite weak there for weeks three and for four. But I think the first half of October, anyway, is looking really quite unsettled if we take the JMA and CFSV2 at base value. So um, maybe we should prepare for some, uh, some autumnal rain. That's all for now. We'll do a weekend forecast tomorrow, so come back for that then. Uh, that's all for now, and thanks for watching.